going to make a new recipe in the Instant Pot. I've got several pinned for a jambalaya. They're probably not totally authentic, but that's actually one dish that I've never made at home. I tend to always get it out at a restaurant or I have in the past used a box of Zatarain. So this will be my first attempt to make a full-fledged jambalaya at home. Uh, of the two or three recipes that I have pinned, they had different ingredients. I'm still trying right now to even decide if I'm gonna cobble them together or pick one of them, but the list of ingredients that I think I will probably use, and I will list the recipe below what I ended up doing, is some andouille sausage. This is not authentic andouille. This is just a national Johnsonville brand. I had it in my freezer. I was looking for something to do with it. Hence, I'm going to try this Pinterest recipe. You'll need some chicken. You can use breasts or thighs. I'm gonna use thighs because I have more of them today. You'll need some garlic and onion. One of the other recipes use the New Orleans Trinity, which also includes bell pepper and celery. I am leaving those out. You'll need some rice. This is just a regular long grain white rice. You'll need some chicken broth. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna use that full amount or part of it. If I end up using the can of diced tomatoes with their juices, I will compensate and use less of the broth. And you will need some seasoning, salt, pepper, um, white pepper, ground red pepper, cayenne pepper, bay leaves, oregano, Worcestershire. One of the other recipes had canned tomatoes with their juices, basil, thyme, and some Cajun or Creole seasoning. So I'm gonna sit down and scratch my head and figure out what I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna try to make this together. Before I started cooking, I prepped everything. I cut up the onion, diced it. You would also dice up the bell pepper and the celery if you were using it. My chicken thighs, even though they were organic, they had a little bit of fat on them. So even though it gives it flavor, I went ahead and trimmed most of the fat. I diced them up into small pieces. Remember, you can use chicken breast. You can also use an authentic andouille sausage. I just used what I had. I always turn my Instant Pot on to saute and let it heat up a little until I can feel the heat. And then I put in the oil until it ripples. You go ahead and saute the chicken first. I didn't cook the chicken all the way through. I just wanted it basically browned on both sides. It was probably still a little bit of pink left in the middle. I try to scrape as I go and get as many of the bits up as I can. I removed the chicken, added a little more oil, and then browned the sausage pieces. This sausage is already fully cooked, so I just basically let it brown on both sides, and then I took it out. If you'll notice, I have a pretty good um, fond or brown bits in the bottom. So I went ahead and started adding the vegetables. Remember, I'm just using onion, but you can use bell pepper and celery. I add a little bit of garlic. And I started adding the chicken broth. I wasn't sure how much I was going to use, so I just added a little and started scraping up the bottom. I've never gotten the burn notice, and I'm still working very hard to get everything off from the bottom, so I do not get a burn notice. I added a dash of Worcester. Then I started adding my seasonings. I added oregano, and then I decided to basically take most of the seasonings from the two recipes I was combining and added them. I also added basil, thyme, cayenne pepper, some Cajun seasoning that I had on hand, or you could use some Creole seasoning or Tony Sacheries, some cracked back pepper, some white pepper, and a little bit of salt. I started up really well to mix up all the seasonings with everything. Then I added a bay leaf. Some of the recipes said two or three. I decided to just do one. I added the can of diced tomatoes with their juice. I tried to smush these around and get it all in there before I added my cup of white rice. I like to smush everything below the liquid. I decided I didn't have quite enough liquid, so I added another little splash of chicken stock just to make sure there was enough. I knew the rice might come out a little soupy, but I'd rather have it like that than dried crunchy bits. I've learned firsthand if the rice is above the level of the liquid, it will come out crunchy. So you add all your meat back, and again, I took my spoon and tried to make sure everything was below in the liquid. I also tried to keep my bay leaf on top so I wouldn't forget to fish it out because I have done that before as well. The two recipes that I'm sort of cobbling together, one of them had, cook, had you cooking the meats and the rice and liquids at 10 minutes and doing a quick release. The other one said five minutes on high pressure and do a five minute natural release. I'm gonna err on that side because when I've cooked white rice in my Instant Pot before, I usually cook it about six minutes. So I'm gonna cook this five minutes on high.
vents. And I made sure the vent was in the ceiling. I don't know. You do that, you'll have your comments. Maybe they can share the floor. Oh, come up here. So the jambalaya cooked five minutes on high pressure and then natural released for five minutes. Then I took it out and remembered to fish out the bay leaf. I stirred it up. It was probably just a little bit wet. I probably should not have added that last little dash of chicken stock, but we were fine with it. I would always rather my rice be a little wet and sticky than dry and crunchy. Plus we always have leftovers and it needs the extra moisture in the refrigerator. This turned out really good. We both gave it two thumbs up and it's something I would definitely try again. I will leave the recipe linked below to the best of my ability to cobble together the ingredients that I used and the amounts. I think you could easily adjust this to your taste and be sure to add the bell pepper and the celery if you like it. You can also add shrimp, but we really enjoyed it with the combination of the chicken and the sausage. We served ours with a salad and some bread on the side. As always, thanks so much for stopping by our channel, Let's Cook Y'all. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe if you hadn't already. Have a wonderful and truly blessed day, y'all. We'll see you in the next video.